siblings can be a good thing, and a bad thing. Most older kids find their younger siblings to be annoying. Being the oldest of three, I never truly thought that. I always looked at it as having two other friends who happened to live with me. My sister Audrey, who was two years younger than me, was fun to hang out with, but she liked to keep to herself in her room most times, especially as we got older. My brother Adam, though, being four years younger than me, always wanted to hang out, especially when I had friends over. My friends were always cool with Adam hanging around. They always said he was a mini-me. Of course, Adam hated that. He'd rather be one of my friends than be the cute little brother. Adam and I used to always get into trouble at home, usually with bothering Audrey. She hated it when we would walk into her room without knocking. Adam was notorious for walking in just for a reaction. That's when Audrey started locking the door to her room. But that didn't stop us. The lock on the door had a slit on the other side of the knob. It took little time for Adam and I to figure out that we could use a small coin to turn the lock and open the door. Audrey was furious. She complained to our parents about us harassing her constantly. That's when my dad sat us down and told us the story about the hand. Adam, even at a young age, was so interested in weird and strange phenomena. The hand was no different. The story went like this. Long ago, there was a boy who found joy in terrorizing his sister. As the years went by, his pranks and jokes became more and more extreme. So much so, that despite the sister's pleas for her brother to stop and his denying to do so, she sought help from an outside source. The source themselves were completely unknown, but the sister was given a box she was told that the contents within would rid her of the torture her brother put her through. When the young girl attempted to open the box, the source warned that she is to only open it when her brother is in a room alone, and she must exit and close the door behind her. The warning was extremely troubling. But the brother and his antics had to be stopped. The next day, the girl walked into her brother's room. He had his back to her and seemed to be busy with something else. So she placed the box on the floor and unlatched the top and slowly opened it. Without peering in, she quickly raced to the door as instructed and closed it as she left. She sat outside the boy's room for what felt to be hours. No noise. No sign of any movement whatsoever. Given the amount of time, the sister finally gave up, assuming the box was just a hoax. She crept back into her brother's room, but noticed he was nowhere to be found. His things were right where he had left them as if he just got up and left. Then she looked down where she had left the box. The top had been shut and relatched. But lying next to the box was a single hand, wiggling as if it had a mind of its own. The girl screamed and ran from the room. She raced down the hallway but she had the sudden urge to take a quick look behind her. That's when she saw the hand scrambling down the hall after her, trying to grab her and pull her into the box from which it came. She escaped its grasp 
and told her parents. They obviously did not believe her. She was so adamant that her father walked back to the brother's room. And of course, they found no sign of the hand, the box, or the brother. The parents called the police and filed a missing persons report. But after months of looking, they still couldn't find the boy. The family eventually moved, and they never heard from the boy again. My dad smirked as he finished the story. Nice story, Dad, I said. I chuckled to myself. But Adam didn't feel the same way. He was almost over the top excited. He started asking about if the hand was the boy's, or if it was something else, or why it terrorizes people. My dad just looked at him with surprise and amusement. Well, he said, the story was meant to make you two stop bothering your sisters so much. I didn't think you would take so much interest, Adam. My brother just stood there in amazement. Little did we know, our lives wouldn't be the same after that. As we grew older, us kids got involved in different types of activities and sports. But Adam wanted to be different. He wanted to test the waters. With everything. Including the law. Even though it was minor stuff, my parents were still shocked and disappointed. But one thing that never changed with Adam was his fascination with the hand. He would tell stories about how it would take things and it would set him up. Everyone grew tired of the craziness he created. After graduating high school, I went away to college. Before I left, Adam stood in the living room and told me how lucky I was not to be terrorized by the hand, and how it would scurry across the room and grab him and try to choke him at night. I shrugged off what he was saying and hugged him goodbye. I told him to try to stay out of trouble. He looked at me with a strange gaze. I always try to, Alan, but it always gets me in trouble, he said. I smiled and told him to take care. While I was away at school, Adam had gotten himself into a lot of trouble. My parents did everything that they could, but they were forced to get him help. I'm not quite sure where he went. All I knew was that my brother was somewhere safe, getting the proper help he needed. When I found out, I called my parents, mostly to see if there was anything that I could do. My mother assured me that everything was okay and that I needed to focus on school, but they would call me if they heard anything. The next few days were extremely bland, until I received a phone call from an unknown number. Despite thinking it was just a random telemarketer, I picked up the phone. Hello? I said. Silence. Before I went to hang up, I heard on the other end. Alan? I almost dropped my phone. The voice on the other end was indistinguishable. It was Adam. Adam? What are you doing? I asked. Alan, I don't have much time, he whispered. The trouble I got in, it wasn't me. I swear I didn't do it. Do what? I asked. He completely ignored my question and continued. The hand. It's going crazy. I figured out how to stop it. I found the box. It's at mom and dad's. You have to capture it before it hurts someone else. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. My brother sounded insane. Adam, you need to stop this, I started. Shh. Do you hear that? He asked. 
They're coming. I have to go. With that, the line went dead. I stood there in utter shock. What is wrong with him? I called my parents to make sure that they were okay. When they confirmed, I told them that I was going to come home for the weekend. I traveled back the next day. It was so good to be back. They kept the house exactly the way I had left. I asked my parents if they had heard from Adam. They looked confused. They told me that they wouldn't be able to contact him until he had been there for a few months. I found that to be strange. I took my bags into my old room and tossed them on the bed. That's when I noticed an old wooden box sitting on my desk. A note was taped to the top that read, Use this. To be honest, I was a bit creeped out, but more exhausted than anything. I put the box to the side and unpacked my things and got ready for bed. I passed out as soon as my head hit the pillow. I was having a really weird dream. One where it felt like my breathing was restricted. I gasped and clawed at my throat, but relief didn't come. I finally shot up out of the dream in a cold sweat. I laid there panting for a while and realized that it was just a dream. I repositioned myself and closed my eyes as I started to fall back asleep. I felt a pressure around my neck, as if I was being choked. I opened my eyes and saw that no one was there, but the pressure still endured. As it constricted more and more, I grabbed for my neck, trying to find the source of the anomaly. That's when my fingers ran across what felt to be five cold bony fingers gripping tightly around my throat.